If you or someone you love struggles to read the screen on your Mac, then this one simple tool can make all the difference. And best of all, it comes built into your Mac. Hello, I'm Anthony and my job is to help people living with sight loss make the most out of technology. In a minute, we'll meet Millie and her granddad Jim and find out what problems he's having with his Mac. Then I'll show you how Zoom, the magnifier built into your Mac, no, not that one, and help solve Jim's problems. But first, what is a screen magnifier? When we use the magnification feature built into an app, it only magnifies one area of the screen, usually the document area. It doesn't do anything to magnify property panels, icons, or menus. A screen magnifier is different. A screen magnifier will magnify everything on the screen. So here, you can see that I've got nice big menus and all elements on this screen have been enlarged. So now let's meet Millie and Jim. Jim has just got a new Mac and he's having tr trouble seeing the screen. Both Millie and Jim are fictional characters. However, the problems that Jim has are the types of problems that people have come to us with. Hi, Grandad. Hi, Millie, love. How are you doing and how is Nero? I'm doing great. Nero had a good report from the vet. Just calling to see how you are getting on with the new computer. That's great to hear. The computer is excellent. Much better than my old machine. I am having a few problems seeing the screen, though. Oh, such as? Well, everything is very small. For example, that menu that runs along the top of the screen, I can hardly see it. And I nearly made a very silly mistake with my online banking. Nearly made a payment of £1,050 instead of £10.50 pence because I didn't see I'd missed the decimal point out. Oh, crikey! Also, when I read my bank statements, I struggle to stay on one line. Are you still doing your newsletter for the Terrier Club? Oh yes, it's excellent for that, though I do find some of the boxes where you have to choose options a bit small. I'm fairly sure there is something we can do to improve that. I'll do a bit of research, and when we come over at the weekend, I'll have a look at it for you. So now we know a bit more about the problems Jim is having. The first thing I'd recommend Jim does is change the screen resolution on his map, as this will make everything bigger. This on its own may be enough to solve his problems. If you've already tried this, feel free to skip to the next section where I show you how to activate the Zoom magnifier. So to change the screen resolution, from the Apple menu, we choose System Settings, then we choose Displays, and if you have a Mac that has a Retina display, you will see the scaled resolution like I have here. If you have an older Mac, or you're using an external monitor, you'll see a list of numbers like this. If I click on more space, then everything gets smaller. And if I click on larger text, then everything gets bigger. I'm going to choose 2048 by 1152, which is this one here in the middle. Depending on your Mac, you may need to restart your computer before you see any changes. If you want even more options, then go into Advanced and turn on Show Resolution as a list. One thing to remember is that if you make the resolution too low, then some apps may not work properly, with elements being cut off. So you may need to experiment. So now that we've adjusted the screen resolution, you can see the difference on these two computer screens. The computer on the left shows before we change the resolution, and the computer on the right shows after we change the resolution. Now, let's return to the Zoom magnifier, and I'll show you how to activate it, and how we can customize it to meet Jim's needs. So to activate Zoom, first go to the Apple menu, 
then click on system settings. Now choose accessibility and choose zoom. There are three ways in which you can use zoom. You can either use a keyboard, you can use a trackpad, or you can use a scroll wheel on your mouse. I can toggle the zoom on and off using the keyboard by holding down the option E and command and then pressing 8. That quickly zooms in. And now if I want to zoom back out again, I can hold down option, command and 8 to toggle it off. I can also zoom in and out gradually by holding down the option E, command E and pressing plus to zoom in and then holding down option, command and minus to zoom out. And of course I can still use option, command and 8 to turn zoom off. If I'm using the trackpad, then with three fingers, I can toggle zoom on and off by double tapping. And then if I double tap with three fingers again, that turns zoom off. To adjust the zoom, I can double tap with three fingers and then drag up to increase the zoom level and then double tap with three fingers and drag down to decrease the zoom level. So I do one, two, down. If I'm using a mouse, I can use the scroll gesture along with the scroll wheel to adjust the zoom level. So as default, this is set as control and using the scroll wheel. So if I hold down control E, and then scroll forward, I can zoom in. And if I hold down control E and scroll backwards, I can zoom out. If I'm using a magic mouse or I'm using a trackpad, I can hold down the control E and then I can use two fingers to drag up and to decrease the zoom, I can use the control E and drag down with two fingers. If you're used to Microsoft Windows, then you'll be used to holding down the control E and scrolling to zoom in and out on applications. This isn't universal on the Mac. However, some applications such as Microsoft Office use this combination for application zoom. So you can customize what modifier E you use for the scroll gesture. And that means you can choose between using full screen zoom or application zoom. So to do this, all you do is click on the drop down box and then choose which modifier E you'd like to use. Or you can hold down a combination of either the control option or command E to set your own modifier E. So if I press option and command, and now I click on the drop down arrow, it will set my custom uh, modifier E. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to stick with having it as control. So now let's remind ourselves of the problems that Jim was having. First, he had difficulty seeing the menus, icons and property panels on the screen. Then he nearly made a very expensive mistake with his online banking because he'd missed out a decimal point. And also, when reading his bank statements, he struggled to stay on one line. So now we'll have a look and see how Zoom Magnifier can help solve these problems. So the default style for Zoom is full screen and this magnifies everything on the screen. It basically gives you a giant monitor. The downside is though you can only see a small proportion of the monitor. So 
it can be quite disorientating. Some people might also find that constant movement is uncomfortable. You can change how much the screen moves by going into clicking on accessibility, clicking on zoom, and clicking on advanced. I recommend that you change zoom in its moves and keep it on when pointer reaches the edge. This option has the least amount of movement. While we're here, we'll also turn on use keyboard shortcuts to adjust the zoom window and we'll turn on toggle between full screen and picture into picture and I will show you what these do in a minute. So now we'll click OK, we'll home out of the system settings menu, go back into our document. So as I said, one of the problems with full screen is you can only see a small area of the screen. So if I want to change this the color of the text on this headline here, if I go over to the properties panel, I can no longer see that text. So what I can do now is I can switch into picture in picture mode. So what I do is hold down the option and command key and then press F. And this brings up a small magnified window. And now what I can do is I can select, I've already got the, the text that I want to change selected. So now I can click on the color picture, come over to my list of colors. I want purple, so I click on purple and then that changes the headline. There's a number of things I can do with this magnified window. If I hold down Control, Option and Command and then use the arrow keys, I can adjust the size of it. So I can make it taller with the up and down arrow keys or wider or narrower with the left and right keys. I can also move it around the screen. So if I hold down Option and Command on my keyboard, and then I can use the arrow keys to move the magnified window around the screen. Picture in picture is also useful for resizing elements on the screen. For example, if I want to change the size of this graphic, it magnifies the handles that I need to click on to adjust the image. As I adjust the image though, I can still see how much space the image takes up in my document in the non-magnified area. By default, the picture-in-picture -picture window moves around the screen as I move my mouse pointer. However, if I'd like it to stay stationary, then I can go back up into the Apple menu click on system settings, click on accessibility, come into zoom, into advanced, and I can choose keep picture in picture window stationary. Now, if I turn on the picture in picture window, as I move around, the text inside the picture in picture window moves, but the window itself stays still. And I can, I can move this around my screen by holding down Option and Command. So now let's look at using Zoom to fill out online forms. So to fill out this form, I'm going to switch on Zoom in full screen mode. But as I type, you'll notice that the magnify, magnification doesn't move with my cursor. As default, Zoom does not follow the keyboard cursor. So what I need to do is I need to go into Settings, Accessibility, Zoom, Advanced. And what I need to do is I need to make sure 
that follow Hebrews through us is set to always. Now I click on OK. So now if I return to my form and go back into full screen, so if I put in John Smith tab and tab again, and you'll notice that this time the magnification is moving with my cursor. If it doesn't, then just press the spacebar and that will force it to focus on the cursor. If I want to see the structure of this form, I can use split screen. Split screen divides the screen up into two sections, magnified and non-magnified. So to do this, I go into settings, come into accessibility, come into zoom, and choose split screen. Then I come out of that, and if I turn zoom on again, you'll notice this time there is a magnified uh, portion at the top of the screen, but I can still see the structure of my screen at the bottom. So again, if I type in uh, the name, so again, it wasn't on focus, so I just press spacebar to make it focus on that field. Now I can type in the name, the credit card number, and the expiry date. There's a number of things I can do with this split. I can move it around the screen. So to do that, I hold down Option and Command. And if I press the down arrow, the split will, the magnified section will move to the bottom of the screen. If I press the left arrow, it will move to the left. And if I press the right arrow, it will move to the right. I'm going to press the up arrow to move it up to the top. And I can also resize it. So if I hold down Control, Option, and Command, and I'll press the down arrow, I can make the split bigger. And if I press the up arrow, I can make it smaller. Jim mentioned that he was having trouble with his bank statement and using a split like this makes it quite useful for looking at tables on screen as it helps you just restrict yourself to one line of text. Also, uh, by changing the split to a vertical split, it lets you have a look at columns of text. We do hope you found this video helpful. If so, please hit the like button and let YouTube know that it's a good video and more people should see it. Here's a video that YouTube thinks you may enjoy next.